In today's feature overview, we're going to be creating a little physics particle splatter of blood. So you can splash blood around when you jump or when you die, you splash blood about. It reacts to physics, so you can push them around and over a few seconds they'll fade out. Before we get started, we should point out that this is not the best for performance. If I create a whole heap of these, you'll see that my frame rate starts to stutter. This is because we're doing full physics simulation for every particle. You see it cleans up after they drop down to a more manageable number. So if you're only doing a couple hundred of these things, it's fine. But if you want an absolute gore fest, you're going to need to work with particles without physics. Or somewhere in the Godot 4 point something range, they're planning on introducing changes to the actual particle system to allow you to have collisions. So my solution here is basically made up of three parts. We've got our player who runs around and does stuff. It doesn't really know anything about the blood, but it emits some signals which we use to trigger everything. We have a blood splatter component, which is what makes our blood splash out and it's where our actual scripts live. And then we have a blood particle. Every single bit of blood you see on the scene is a blood particle. So we'll start here. This blood particle is made up of a rigid body 2D, which gives us all our physics options. We've got a collision shape, which you need for the rigid body 2D so that you know what you're colliding with. Then we have a sprite, which is just a red square. Now I've made this by creating a texture gradient that goes from one color to itself. If you've never made a sprite like this before, we simply add a gradient texture. Under this gradient texture, you have a gradient. We add a new gradient, then in the gradient you can set its settings. If you click on one of these points, it shows you what the color is on the right here. You can add more points and you can remove them by right clicking. We're just going to set this to red and we'll set the other to the same sort of red. Uh, otherwise, we're changing the width here down to one pixel wide. And then I have changed in my node DD transform the scale. So by default, it's one pixel, which is fine if that's your size. I found that with my player size in the scene, a five pixel square for each blood splash is perfect. So we've got our five pixels here under our collision shape. The x dents are two and a half. This is because the x dents are like the radius of a circle. So they're half of the full size. So if I were to set these to five each, we're going to have a collision shape that's a full 10 pixels. So we'll put this back to two and a half by two and a half, which makes it the exact same size as our sprite. The last bit of the blood particle is the logic for fading it out over time. We're doing that with an animation player. So our animation player sets the modulate alpha on our sprite and then we queue free at the end. So if we look at the modulate alpha in the sprite first, a sprite under this visibility flag here for a canvas item has a modulate. This modulate is applied over top of the sprite and lets you change the color. So if our sprite was white and we were to drag it over to here, we'd be adding green onto the white, which would make it this green. If you add this red, of our sprite to the screen from our modulate, you get this color here. We're not touching the color on this. So if we just quickly turn that back, what we're touching is the alpha, which is how opaque it is. So here we have it at full, which makes it full red. As we bring this down, you'll see that it fades out until it's invisible. What we're seeing here in blue is this collision shape. So if we hide that, our sprite's gone. So if we set this back and we look at our timeline, at the start here, at zero seconds, we set our alpha to one, which is the maximum value between zero and one. We slide along to two and a bit seconds, it's still one. So that first two and a bit seconds, the blood is fully visible. Then it slowly fades out. So at just after three and a half seconds, our value here becomes zero, fully transparent. So Godot handles nicely fading between those. So over the course of about a second, it'll fade out of view. And then just after it's gone fully invisible, we call Q free. You can add a function track in here, which lets you call a function on anything. 
so we could call our play on a different animation at the end here instead we're going to the blood particle since it's the root of this scene and we're calling q3 which will delete the blood particle and everything under it so that's our blood particle our blood splatter component is just a node 2d and it's got a script on it that script exposes these which we'll look at as we go through it so on our script here we have our blood splatter component it extends node 2d i haven't given it a class name of its own because no one should need to reference it and we export three variables the first is a packed scene which is something we can instantiate in our case it here is set as our blood particle so we can drop our blood particle on here the next is the blood particle number which is the default number of particles of blood that we should spawn i've chosen 15 it's just a nice little number the random velocity here is a number that we're going to use to apply a random direction to each particle after we spawn it we've then got this blood splatter signal name which we'll ignore for now and i'll come back to later we'll hide this bit about the signal so the next important thing is our random number generator which is used so that we can pick a random direction based on this velocity we call randomize on it so that we seed it ourselves in the ready of our blood splatter component this bit here we can ignore because it's to do with the uh, signal so the guts of this is the splatter method it takes a single argument which is the number of particles to spawn if you ask to spawn zero or less we're going to use this blood particle number so if our particles to spawn is less than or equal to zero so if you call splatter passing in nothing where we default to negative one here then we will grab the blood particle number after that we get to the guts of this so our spawned particle is just going to be a variable to hold each piece of blood as we spawn it then we loop over our particles to spawn so that's either going to be what you pass in or this number set up in here we instantiate our blood particle scene which is this guy which is that blood particle we were just looking at then we grab the root of the tree and we add our spawn particle there now we're applying it to the root of the tree because that's hopefully going to be a static part of the scene if you were to add child on this blood splatter component it's going to be attached to something so this blood splatter component is probably going to be attached to a player or an npc which means that each of these particles would move relative to that player or npc as they moved around so by attaching it to the root of our tree we're hopefully attaching it to like the the level which means that all of our positioning and rotation and everything is going to be relative to something static so your player can run around and they're not in an impact where these particles are we then set our global position of the particle we just spawned to the position of our component and then we apply a linear velocity to that spawn particle so this is where this random velocity comes in so this will set the velocity to be randomly between negative 500 and positive 500 in the x and then another random number in the y which will make them shoot off in some direction on the scene now if we look back at our signal stuff in my game i have a player and when that player dies they emit an on death signal i've decided to add some logic to my blood splatter component to look out for that and automatically handle blood splattering so we have a blood splatter signal name which is just a variable to hold that on death which is the signal that i know is already emitted by our player on the ready for our blood splatter component we grab our parent so we get whatever the blood splatter component is attached to in this case i know that i attach it directly to the player and see that our player has the blood splatter component we get all the signals that can be emitted by that node so in this case my player emits all of these sorts of signals we loop through those until we find a signal that has a name matching on death so we go through all the signals if there is a signal with the name on death then we will connect to it and when that signal is emitted it will go to our on parent death method and our on parent death method here just calls splatter 
it does not pass in any arguments, which means we'll use this many particles. So the last bit is on our player, we attach the blood splatter component. Now there are a couple of things I've changed here. So we've attached the blood splatter component under the player, and then I've set our particle number to be 64 instead of 15. So when my player dies, it'll splatter out 64 particles. I've also given it a random velocity of a thousand. So each particle will move in the X and the Y between negative a thousand and positive a thousand. So they'll shoot out in some sort of direction from our player. So at its most basic, that's all there is. To show the signal stuff, we'll look at our player script. So on the script for the player, we have two signals, one for on death and one for on jumping. The on death happens in my process method. I have the UI cancel, which is the escape key to sort of simulate death for the player. So it emits the on death signal. And then I set my position back to the start position which is where the player was when the game started and I turned physics processing back on just in case it was disabled. So my start position for the scene is up here. When my player dies by me pressing escape, they'll teleport back up to here and that on death event will be triggered. The other piece to look at is the on jump signal. So in my physics process, if I'm moving upwards, I trigger the on jump. With all of those together, we can see if I start up my game and I'm running around and I hit escape, my character resets to their start position, their on death signal is triggered. And because the blood splatter component looks for that on death signal, I didn't have to set up anything else. I just add a blood splatter component and it starts working. This is quite cool because it means that any of your NPCs, you just add the component to them and make them trigger the on death signal when they die and they'll automatically get blood splatter without knowing anything about the blood system. The second thing that I've set up is on our player here, under the node, we can see that we have the on jump signal and I've set that up so that it calls our blood splatter component splatter method. Now, if we quickly look back at that, we remember that the splatter takes an argument for how many particles to spawn. If it doesn't get given the argument, or that number is less than or equal to zero, it'll use our blood particle number, which in the case of our player is 64. So that's the number we get on death. Just to show something different, our player set up here, when he jumps, we'll call the components splatter method and ask for a hundred particles to be sent. So no code in the player script, just using signals in Godot. If I run this and jump around, we splash out a whole heap of particles. First, when I die, it's a much smaller number. That's our 64 versus the hundred. So now that we've seen the bulk of how the system goes together, we can talk about some extensions that we could do. Because of the way all this is set up, where everything is compartmentalized, our blood splatter component doesn't really care what sort of blood particle it emits, and a player doesn't really care that it's got a blood splatter component. All it cares about is raising a couple of signals that tell the rest of the game when it dies, or in my case, when it jumps. You might have a on damage taken signal. So every time it gets hurt, it raises a signal you could connect that signal to a blood splatter component and splash out four or five particles every time someone gets hurt. What's cool about this is we can completely change the behavior of a blood particle. On our player, we could then change our blood splatter to emit this different type of blood particle. So maybe you've got an enemy that's like a lizard with acid blood. You could change the blood splatter component for that one enemy so that it emits a different acid blood particle. That acid blood particle might have a different sprite color. It might also have collision logic. So you can add into the scripts on those blood particles that maybe anytime it collides with something, it'll deal five damage. So then when that lizard takes damage, it'll splash out a little bit of blood, which will damage anyone behind it. When it dies, it'll erupt in blood. And if you happen to be standing too close, each blood particle that hits you will deal you a little bit of damage.
Hopefully this gives you enough to go on. If you want more of these longer form videos, leave a comment down below saying what you want to learn next.